Welcome everybody to our energy talk. My name is Jona Brenders. I'm an energy healer and therapist from Florida, airing here from my healing tent. This energy talk happens right after our energy prayer here on YouTube Live. Everybody's invited to join. We just had a very powerful prayer session and in this interaction with you, subjects come up. And one of the subjects that came up here today, and I think it's also characteristic for the times that we are in. If you've been following me for a while, you know this, I regularly reflect on collective energies and what this means for us internally, yeah? how we can use this for our personal transformations and self-healing processes. and. Right now, there is a lot of confusion around what it is that we are feeling, that we are sensing, that we are thinking. Um, there are words, obviously, that are frequently used here in conjunction with our current pandemic situation where there is a lot of controversy, there is a lot of different um, opinions, uh, there is uh, contradicting facts, there's contradicting factions, and a lot of polarity, a lot of attacking another. And this all leads to a big confusion in us, namely what is true, what is real. There is a, a little saying that I have um, that says, just because it's real, doesn't mean it's true. And I wanted to send this out to you here just as a little cue and ask you guys what this means to you. Do you see what I am hinting at? I'm hinting at the difference between doing, behaving, acting as a as a reaction to, you know, what is momentarily going on and being what the true me really feels, really thinks, really senses and really believes. Attitude has to do with that. But attitude is still something that comes from a cognitive level and therefore is only a small part of reality. It is when we learn to put all these different levels of perception together that we get a more clear picture of who we truly are. Yeah, there's many examples that I could share with you. I do this here in uh, the sacred self-healing community where we do workshops and work through detailed subjects yeah where I also share a lot about you know my own story and how I got to all these conclusions and this inner truth so standing to our own truth guys is a process not an event that exactly this is like something that you're going to have to develop as a habit, as you need to cultivate this. It has to do with attitude, but not like attitude as in bad or good attitude, but attitude as in like, hang on. Where is this momentary perception coming from? Is this coming from my mind? Is this coming from my emotions? Is this coming from my body? Is this coming from my etheric or energetic perception or is this coming from my spiritual beliefs it isn't until a person can actually differentiate that on an ongoing level that you should ever assume yeah, that you are standing in your truth standing in your truth means to acknowledge and consciously witness all oh, these different levels of existence yes and this is where many of us experience quite a bit of a confliction because we feel 
something like a spiritual yearning or nostalgia or something that feels like a belonging. We feel something like a spiritual impulse, but we don't know how to contextualize it sometimes, depending on what religions we were influenced by. These are just beliefs that we have taken on sort of second hand. We have, we've been schooled in them, we've read them, we've been told them. But this spiritual impulse that we can feel from within is different. This is coming from within your own integrity. This is coming from within yourself. It doesn't mean, you know, that all religious teachings are bad. It's just that our job is to discern them more and what really resonates with us and which parts don't and then maybe you know sort of start forming our own version of that exactly you had to make more space for yourself as opposed to just sort of taking things on there are attitudes and misconceptions out there such as anger is a bad emotion so many of us try to suppress anger because we think it's unspiritual this is a really, really big problem for a lot of people because if you suppress certain type of emotions, it's like you're leaving out certain color spectrums out of your painting. Yeah, And you know what happens if you try to paint a painting and you have no yellow yeah, or no red or no blue? Yeah, Then a whole other spectrum of the whole color range falls away. We all do this because we are not asking ourselves truly. Yeah? And we think that just because we are experiencing this emotion right now, or just because we're having this thought right now, or just because my body experiences this pain right now, or my belief experiences this right now, my spiritual connection, that this is who you are. No. This is just a tiny fraction of who you are. So it's very important when it comes to really wanting to discern what's real and what's true, yeah? to see yourself in this more augmented, holistic way. And that allows you to say, you know what, emotionally, I'm really, really angry right now. And my body feels really tense. And I really feel like I need to punch a bag. Okay. And the voices I'm hearing right now, you know, my, my inner dialogue is like, I should leave you right away, yeah? And never, you know, walk out and never look back. Spiritually, I feel like, hmm, you know, I mean, we've built so much together and we have kids together and there is something beyond just what is being said and done that connects us. And I still believe in that part. Do you see what I'm saying? And there, there are, it, it paints a picture in a higher resolution and it allows you, yeah, acknowledging all your sensations, feelings, and perception allows you to see the bigger picture, to feel truth better, and to discern. So in other words, when something appears real to you in the moment, it's totally okay to say to yourself, oh, wow, I'm really, really angry right now. Or, oh, man, this really, really hurts. Yeah, like say you have a headache or you, ha you go through some pain. Or I'm really, really afraid right now. Or if you have these intrusive thoughts where you say, whoa, I mean, I have this like serious mental overlay right now, yeah? Like, or, I mean, it's a bit more complex. I mean, you can already identify, oh, this is, zooms you back into some kind of trauma or some kind of childhood state. Oh, trust me, it's not easy to say this out loud, but it's extremely healing when you do that. Oh, wow, I feel like a little child right now. And that does not feel good. That feels very, very powerless. You want to actually be able to say that to your 
partner in the middle of a fight <laughs> takes a lot of courage. But trust me, it is probably the truest you can ever say if you already have the awareness. Mm -hmm. It's in that moment that you acknowledge it, that you're stepping back into your power. Awareness warrior. Acknowledge it and say, okay, I have conflicting parts in me. And that means I cannot see clearly right now. It means that whatever appears real to me right now may as well be, well be real on that level. But it doesn't match up. Something isn't matching up. And now comes the most important question. What do I do? What do I do when I realize that in me something doesn't feel true? How can I move into more truth? What works for you guys? What is it that you do, if at all? to get to higher levels of, of inner congruence, of, of feeling yourself better, of feeling your own truths more. What do you guys, what works for you guys? Intuitively, not like fancy stuff. Facing the fear, okay, but facing the fear is sometimes impossible. When you're in that state, I mean, being able to acknowledge it is already a huge accomplishment. Breathing. Very good, Cindy. Breathing, we can all breathe. And especially when we get into these like really rolled up, panic-like states. Yeah, whatever they got triggered by, physically, emotionally, mentally, spiritually, or energetically. We can always pay attention to our breath because it happens without our doing. Yeah, so... Taking a deep breath. <laughs> eating healthy, yes, but eating habits, guys, those are long-term or mid-term things. In the moment, you need to do something exactly, Cindy. You need to do something to shift your energy physically. Now, it can help, for example, to drink water. You have to always have a water bottle close by. Because a lot of nervous states, yeah, physical, emotional, mental states, can be triggered by dehydration or sleep deprivation. So taking a nap, for instance, drinking some water or a nice hot tea yeah, without caffeine in them. Yes, going outside to ground yourself. I mean, if you can't go outside because of weather or where you live, take your... Shoes off, feel the soles of your feet touching the ground. Stretching, very good. Stretching is really, really good. That can help right away. Also, literally punching your back. Uh, to bring about a physical shift, yeah, through what it is that you're doing, just to shake off the energies. Yeah? Even this little exercise that we do before each energy prayer, already shifts the energy yeah so in hot cold showers yes very good these are all things that can help us to it's almost like a Cindy called it disrupt or reset in the moment right mm -hmm. shaking the body dancing listening to music and one of the things that I know most of you do intuitively going out into nature yeah or even just looking at a flower or, you know, looking at a nature movie <laughs> with lots of nature. These things actually help. Yeah? Singing, exactly. Singing or humming. Or, you won't believe it, but that's the truth of an energy healer. <coughs> Coughing, burping, yeah, and all other kinds of Physical releases help you to reset your energy. Yes, playing with your dog if you have a pet or your cat or your kids or whatever. All these things are super, super effective for sort of resetting your energy a little bit so that you get out of this sort of acute state of reality 
and calm down a little bit and feel yourself more. This is really what energy work is about. It's not about the fancy stuff. It's about the, remem or the memory, the, the remembrance in that moment that you are overwhelmed by a certain reality, that you want to feel your whole self. Okay. So this is a probably the most important lesson in in energy work, probably the most important energy talk that I could ever give. And if you follow my workshops, if you um, join any of the programs or online courses that I have, you'll hear me talk about this in even more detail. This month's energy alignment is integrity, integrity of reality, to be precise. All right, and this is an energy alignment that you can uh, download and listen to for free on SoundCloud. Yeah, you find all the other energy uh, alignments there as well, and lots of different, lots of different free stuff. Okay, so here, the picture of this energy alignment for October. And if you are ready to experience all these things that I or we just talked about, not just through your ears and through your mind, maybe a little bit through your eyes, but also from within yourself. Because until we can verify it within ourselves, until we can feel it from within, until you can feel integrity from within yourself, you wouldn't know it. It's just talk. So let's walk the talk together here in our sort of process of learning how to discern what's real and what's true and connecting with our higher power. This needs to be cultivated, obviously. You can't just do this once or, you know, just, you know, whenever there is uh, some kind of event going on, it's something that I recommend you to do every day. 20 minute meditation every day, already after two weeks, changes your nervous system, changes the way you see your reality, you perceive yourself. Oh, it's very, very powerful, guys. So let's do this together. I'm turning my sound off and tuning the music up. Yeah, you can lean back. You're going to see me close my eyes now. I'm going to meditate with you here. And when we're done, we have a few minutes to reflect. This was a very powerful meditation here for our internal experience. <sighs> Don't know what to say. Thank you, everybody, for creating this. Uh, this round of like-minded and like-hearted and like-spirited people from all over the world. Yes, it was very powerful. It's encapsulated the October energies. Yeah, so this can be part of your spiritual first aid for October. But these energy alignments, they always work. You can go back. Browse a little bit on SoundCloud. Uh, there was my energy alignments from the past. I don't know how many are on there. 50 or so. Thank you everybody for coming here. Please share the links, share my YouTube channel. That's the easiest way to, to link in with the live stream. Um, I also send out newsletters with 
the edited energy talk and on Fridays we record the energy update and energy tips live. Yeah. Help us raise the vibration for ourselves and everyone we come in contact with. Yeah, to become able to better discern between what is real and what is true. I love you guys. <laughs> Check my website for my personal coaching and training programs and courses and all that. Love to work with you directly. See you. Bye-bye.